Hello, everybody. How are you? Oh my goodness, I can't believe it is week 11. We only have one more week and I'll talk about next week and what next week is gonna be all about for you guys. But week 11, I'm just telling you, I have been leading all the way up to week 11. And I'm so excited about sharing this with you. Week 11 is called multiply. You guys have learned about warfare prayer. You've learned that we have an enemy. You've learned that the church is is not a building and revivals are not events. Oh my goodness. And I've heard some of your discussions. They're so powerful. I've seen the pictures. I know God is working in the group and I know that he's working on your life individually as well. I know that the leaders of each of these groups uh, groups have been so excited about what God is doing and I look forward to see as time goes on more and more groups go through this. So I am going to ask you at the beginning of this that if your life has been touched throughout this journey as you finish out this journey, um, I'm going to ask you to go out on the Facebook page and comment. Leave a a um, um, the five star, the, what do you call it? The rating, leave a rating on the Facebook page and tell them about your experience with um, this, this free Bible study, Calling Over Comfort. Encourage other ladies to get a part of this Bible study. I'm super, super excited about it. And not on the Calling Over Comfort website, on the Consumed by the Call Facebook page. Go to that Facebook page and leave a comment. Leave a comment with a with a star rating. Let them know what what has happened to you, why you would encourage other ladies to become a part of the Calling Over Comfort. So today, everything's been leading up. All 10 weeks have been leading up. I've been so excited about week 11, and it is Multiply. Now, one of the churches that God has led my family to, and one of them is called Tribes Church, and it is on Sunday. Sunday mornings where we are serving. I'm serving in their media team and um, Peyton is serving on the worship team. Grayson is serving in the children's team and um, helping with the children. And then of course, Reagan is with the young adults in a Bible study and also helps on the worship team as well. And so God is using us. It's a brand new church start and we absolutely love the pastor, Pastor Gavin and his wife, Nicole, and just some amazing people there. And God's been using us there and we're loving it. But one of the things that I love about it is that it's Tribes Church, but the motto or the quote that um, Pastor Gavin felt that the Lord had given him was gather, scatter, multiply. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to we're going to dig into the word. Let's look at Matthew 28, 16 through 19. So if you have your Bibles with you, pull that open. Matthew 28, 16 through 19. And if you don't have your Bibles with you, just write it down because you can look at it later. Matthew 28, 16 through 19, and it says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. I love it. The Bible calls this our great commission. It's where Jesus is about to go back to heaven. And he's about to, um, he's, he's already gone to the cross. He's already resurrected. He's already shown himself to so many people. And now it's time for him to go back. It's time for him to go back to heaven um, and to prepare a place for us, to get ready to come back and get us. And he's leaving a commission for us. And so what happens here? First thing I want you to notice is that he gathers them together. And he tells them, gather together. So the 11 disciples went away to Galilee, to the mountain that Jesus had appointed them to go. So he appointed them to gather. Then he says to them, all authority has been given to me. Why do we gather? So that we can be empowered, okay? Do not forsake the assembling of ourselves. God is saying, don't forsake that. Find a church body. Get to be a part of it. Be a part of a group of Christian friends that empower you. Did you come together? Be a part of a powerhouse church, one that believes in Jesus, one that's going to encourage you, one that's going to send you out. It's 
powerful, one that will disciple you to love Jesus the more, to know him the more. That's where you need to go. So the first thing God that Jesus is doing here, that God is doing here, is he's gathering them together. When he gathers them together, he tells them, I'm going to empower you. That's why we come together. We're going to get empowered. We're going to come together and in the synergy of Christians coming together, the power of the Holy Spirit will come and empower you, refresh you, get you ready to go back out into the world again, right? So first gather. Then he says, go therefore, right? Now he's going to scatter. So this is the hard part because what we love to do is gather. We gather to fellowship. We gather to learn and all of those things. But let me tell you something, gathering without scattering what, uh, my husband used to say all the time, it's like sit soaking and souring. If all you do is go to church and you never serve, you never scatter, you never go and use what God has given you in the church, if you never go out to the world, you will literally sit soak and sour. Do you know some of the most unhappy, sour people I've met have been sitting in a pew? And I think there's a reason why they call it a pew, right? That's just a little joke, sorry. So, don't sit soaking sour. Yes, gather. Yes, get refreshed. Yes, come together, learn, and be empowered. But the next thing is to scatter. Go, therefore. Now, what do we do when we go? We multiply. We multiply because the next words are and make disciples. And make disciples. So God calls us to gather. Don't ever forsake that. Empower, refresh, get ready. Now scatter, don't stay there. Scatter, go into all the world, right? Go and tell, but be purposeful when you go. It's not just about just going. It's about going to share who Jesus is, what he's done in your life. And we're gonna talk about how easy that is, but the next thing is to scatter, and the next thing is to multiply. You know what? A mature Christian will multiply just like a mature um, uh, a mature creature will multiply, right? Part of maturity is being able to multiply. A child can't multiply, but an adult can, right? We're, we're taught to multiply. God said go into all the world and multiply, right? He told Adam and Eve. We are as Christians to multiply, meaning go and make other disciples. Go and tell people about Jesus, about Jesus. So make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, then teaching them to observe all things that I command you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Even to the end of the age. That's Matthew 28, 16 through 19. Now Acts 1, 4 through 11. Again, the beginning of the church. We're going to start with four. And being assembled together, gather, right? Uh, together with them, he commanded them not to depart Jerusalem. He says, don't depart. I want you to stay here, right here. And I want you to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, gather, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses in me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Right? So again, gather. He brought them all together, gathered them together. Then he said, I'm going to empower you. The Holy Spirit's going to come and empower you. You're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then he said, I am going to scatter you. Because what does he say? Go into all of Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And the ends of the earth. And what do you do? Be my witnesses. Now, this is a perfect example. A lot of times we think, well, I don't know how to lead anybody to Jesus. How do I make a disciple? Boy, that's just scary, Francine. What do I do with that? You make a disciple just by sharing what God has done in you. You don't have to have all the complicated, deep theology. Don't argue theology in scripture. All you're going to do is share your story. What has God done for you? Where were you when God met you? What did he do for you? How did he forgive you? And now what is he doing for you? 
all we're doing is witnessing, giving witness of what Jesus does in a life. And the only thing you can give witness to is what you have seen what you have seen, right? In a jury, you're not able to share what they call hearsay. I heard someone say, but you share what you know. It's something they cannot deny. What has Jesus done in your life? So God expects us to gather together to be empowered, then scatter out, go, right? And then multiply, making other disciples of Christ. In verse 9, it says, Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So even they were standing there and there was Jesus rising up, going toward heaven, and they just stood there gazing. And God sent angels to them to go, why are you still standing here? Jesus already told you to go, scatter, go to Judea, go, 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 right? So it is a tendency of ours to want to stay where God's moving. And I get it. I get it. There's going to be a part of this group right here this group of ladies and men that have come together. I don't know where you've been meeting or what's been going on, but there's going to be a part of you that's going to want to stay right here in this little group because God's moved and he's changed your life. But God wants to scatter you. He wants to scatter you because that's the next step. So many of you, I believe with all my heart, God's already calling you to start your own group to take this Bible study or the next one that we put out, but maybe just this one, this one again. Take it, invite a few friends over that would come to your house or to come to a restaurant or, or to come to um, a coffee shop and share this Bible study with them. I know God's calling you out to do it because it's time to go. It's time to scatter and it's time to multiply. I've been so excited to see who takes me up on this. Yes, this Bible study has been amazing. And next week, you need to come back one more time as you celebrate, as you spend some time. Part of your challenge will be to, to there'll be a really neat challenge and a really neat thing that's going to go on in the discussion questions in a little while. It's going to help you as you decide whether or not it's you that God's calling out to be a leader and multiply and become another group to do just what God has done in your group do even more in another group. So come together, do your discussion questions in a moment, watch what God does. I'm excited, I've already been praying for you. And then take on the challenge that's at the end. Next week, you guys are gonna come together and you're going to celebrate what God has done. And now I'm not gonna really explain it because you're gonna have to read your challenge in just a moment. But next week, I encourage y'all to get some food together. Everybody bring some food come together, be ready to celebrate together, and part of it will be sharing what you've done in your challenge. Part of it will be what God has done throughout the week. I want you guys to come back next week ready to celebrate, because here's one thing that I have learned. God loves workers, he does. He loves for you to get to work, but he also loves celebrations. And you know how I know that? Because when God set up, set up the kingdom of God, when he set up the church, when he set up the Jewish culture, what did he set up? Feasts. Feasts. What is one of the things that's going to happen when we get to heaven? The marriage supper of the Lamb. God loves to celebrate too. And so next week is about celebrating what God has done, celebrating what you've learned, and beginning to share what happened during the week from the challenge you're going to get tonight. So I am super excited. There'll be a short video for me to share during the celebration, but um, I am so excited. Thank you so much for joining Consume, this Consume by the Call um, first Bible study, Calling Over Comfort. I pray it's challenged you. I pray it's encouraged you. And I pray that God's going to use you to multiply the kingdom and bring revival. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, see you guys next week as we celebrate what God has done. But this week, make a choice to multiply. Gather, scatter, and multiply. Talk to you guys later.